Hello, welcome to another Blender tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be a visual effects tutorial. It's going to be about how to create a lightsaber in Blender using motion tracking and also compositing. We're going to be compositing animation with uh, real footage. So hopefully what you'll be able to learn out of this is how to do two-point motion tracking, how to mix animation with your live action footage, and how to create a lightsaber inside of Blender. Okay, so with our new scene, let's change it to cycles. We'll delete the default cube and lamp. We also want to uh, press N, bring up this sidebar. And with our camera selected, change the location of each of these to zero, except for the Z axis. We want that to be 10 Blender units high. And then also the rotation, we want all of these to be zero on the side. Leave the scale the same. And that just puts our camera in the very center of uh, the grid looking down. And that's just going to be more useful whenever we're dealing with our footage and mixing it with our animation. Okay, so now at the top left, let's change it from default to motion tracking. And you're going to open your footage. Now I'm going to make the link to this footage available to download. It's just going to be a folder of JPEGs because I've converted my video to a uh, JPEG sequence of 150 frames. A lot of times Blender works, it's easier for Blender to read um, an image sequence than an actual video clip. At least that's been my experience. So um, this is my footage and it's actually 149 frames. So I'm just gonna end that down here at 149. And you can scrub through, you can see all I've done is taken a dowel rod and I took a Sharpie and colored green, pink and then green. And because I want to track this pink part. Um, I found Blender works really well when it has some high contrast area to track. So having the two colors on opposite side of the color you want to track worked really well. So if you want to make your own lightsaber track, um, that's what you can do. And this is only a two point track. So we have our two points here that we're going to track. Okay, talking too much. So let's zoom in on this bottom track. And since we're in the motion tracking tab, all we have to do is press control and left click. You can see over here on the right, that shows us exactly where that track is. If you wanna move it around so it's very much on the pink part just kind of in the very center. Okay, that looks good. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit track forward. And you can see it stopped, lost the track at about frame 27. And it's something I kind of knew was gonna happen with this footage, but I wanted to um, leave it be because it's kind of a common problem. Blender doesn't always track perfectly, so uh, it'll lose the track, but it's very easy to fix. You just press G to grab that tracker and move it back to where it needs to be and then hit track forward again. It'll keep going until it loses it again. Bring it back up. It's really better to follow this right hand window over here um, so you can see right where you're putting it. Now track forward again. And that, see it lost it again. Just press G to grab that, move it back in the center. And there we go, it finished. But you can see that this is what, this is another problem that happens with tracking too. It's down here on the green, which isn't where our original track is or where we want it to be. Now this wouldn't be a huge problem if you were doing camera tracking where you have multiple trackers and if one gets slightly off, it's gonna be made up for somewhere by another one or 20 other ones. But since we're only doing two points, we have to fix things like this because it's very important that our tracks are right where they need to be. So let's just, it's very easy to fix that also. Just press G to grab, move it back up here to the pink. And I'm just using the left and right arrow keys. You can see we have another frame that's down on the green. Move it up to the pink. Now we can just scrub through our footage. 
There's another frame. So you to grab and move that up. And let's see. There's a quick frame right there. Just want to grab that up. Um, another tip here. This is purely my fault for, I mean, it's a little bit Blender's fault, <laughs> but it's mostly my footage is not exposed properly. You can see it's really overexposed here. And so there's a lot of white in this, in these two colors. Um, and so that's just, a, that's just a tip that it's very important to expose your footage properly. I was just by myself with a tripod. So I don't have anyone really checking my footage while I was shooting this. Um, but if you can, you know, have someone there, just try it till you get it. Expose your footage properly and it's going to make tracking a whole lot easier when you don't have this overexposure. Blender thinks everything is white. It's just going to help you out a lot. Um, so I <laughs> hope a lot of you are using your own footage and not really mine because it's good footage for showing you the problems that happen with motion tracking, but not necessarily the best footage to track. Okay, I think we got all the frames that went astray for that bottom one. I'm just scrubbing through, double checking. It looks like it's pretty much staying on the pink dot over here on the right hand side. I did it again, left my, left my um, screencast keys off. Sorry about that. Some people don't care about screencast keys. Some people just really want them. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing with the top track. So I'll go jump back to frame one, zoom in on this guy, and same thing, control left click, and just position it around. It's in a real pink area. Now we're just going to track that one forward, and that one only got to about 25 frames. Just press G to grab. Track forward again. And I know it's tedious. I hope you get a good idea for some of the problems that a lot of people just get discouraged by motion tracking and give up, but um, they're pretty easy fixes for the most part. It might be boring, but easy. Okay, now same thing. Just scrub through here, see if there's any frames that decided to leave. And I don't think this one has any, so that's great. Again, it's probably because this is in a darker area, there's higher contrast, Blender is able to find that pink dot easier. Okay, good. That's it for the tracking part of it. We have our two tracks on our two dots. We're ready to go. So, back to frame one. I'm gonna select this bottom track. Over here on the bottom left hand side, we're going to go to reconstruction and link empty to track. And same thing for the top one, link empty to track. Now we're going to change up here at the top. We're going to go back to default. And you see looking through our camera, we have our two tracks waving back and forth in the breeze. <laughs> I don't know. And they're right in position with our tracks. And um, if you don't believe me, you can check the background images over here on the right, click add image, change it from all views to just the camera view, click on movie clip, uncheck that, and we have our footage right here, whatever your footage is. Um, if you're using a JPEG sequence like I am, it'll just be the first frame. And now if we scrub through you can see Donna, those empties are linked perfectly to our tracks. And that's just great. Okay, so I'll jump back to frame one. I'm gonna press seven for top view and five for orthographic mode. Now we're gonna build our lightsaber. So I'm gonna select just this bottom empty. I'm gonna press shift S and then cursor to selected. We have our cursor, 3D cursor is right in the middle of that empty. I'm going to press Shift A and add in a bone. A bone? Why do we need a bone for a lightsaber? Well, we need something to that's going to properly stretch between 
these two empties because um, otherwise our lightsaber would be too distorted to be able to be worth it. So and I'm just going to press tab for edit mode with this bone selected and drag it over and down. Press Z for wireframe and just want to position it so it's in the very center of this um, other empty, the top empty. Hopefully you can see this okay. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to check it from all angles. I think that's good. Okay. Now, um, with the bone selected, I'm going to press, I'm going to hold down shift and right click this bottom empty. I'm just going to press control P and object keep transform. So now that bone is linked to this empty. And now we want it to stretch to this top empty. So to do that, I'll select this bone. In the bottom left, we'll change it to pose mode. Right click to select the empty and shift right click to select the bone. You want to make sure it's highlighted in blue. Um, that means it's in pose mode. And now we're going to press shift control C. And that brings up this menu. You can see underneath tracking, we're going to click stretch to. So now if we look through the camera, we can see that bone stretches to that top empty. And it's staying perfectly in line with the bottom one. Perfect. That's a beautiful thing. Now also something I like to do with this bone selected. You don't have to do this. I think it's cool. Go over here to the bone settings and just change it to a stick. That way you can see it better. Make sure it's in line with the dowel rod or whatever it is you're using. And it is. So that's awesome. So I'm going to press 7 for top view again. Jump back to frame 1. I'm going to select this empty again and shift S, make sure the cursor is still at the center and it is. Now we're going to press shift A, we're going to get into modeling the actual mesh of the lightsaber. So I'll just add in a cylinder, scale it way down. I'm going to go to side view, rotate that by 90 degrees, press R and 90. Tab for edit mode and just drag this up, maybe scale it on the Y. Um, it's a little too thin. I have to confess here, I'm not a, um, I'm not a Star Wars nerd. <laughs> um, so I don't know exactly how a lightsaber should be. So I hope I don't offend all the <laughs> Star Wars fanatics that are going to notice if it's not exactly right. Um, so you can correct me and you can make it exactly how it should be and then show me how to do it. Um, I just think lightsabers look awesome. And so I set out to try to make my own. So there, that's that. Okay, so I'm just... Um, doing some basic modeling, make sure it's the length I want it to be. Uh, down here at the bottom, just kind of taper off this a little bit. I'll press E to extrude, S to scale in, E to extrude again. Maybe kind of make a little ridge here. Yeah, that's good. And now I'll kind of taper off the top. So I'll grab these top vertices and just scale it in. The way it has sort of a rounded point. Okay, good. I'm just gonna set this shading to smooth. And let's check that one more time. I think that's about good, size-wise. Now with this select, I'm gonna press Control A and apply the scale. Now we want to rotate it, obviously, so it's in line with this bone. So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure our cursor is still at the center of this empty, because we want to rotate it based off of this uh, pivot point right here. And to do that, down here at the bottom, we want to change the pivot point to 3D cursor, since our cursor is perfectly um, 
in line with that empty. When we rotate this, you can see it rotates along the bottom just like that. Perfect. So now we can line it up with our pole and with that top empty and with our bone. <laughs> Got a lot of things to line it up by. And you can sort of position it, move it around, make sure it's right where you want it to be. You, you don't want your rod or whatever you use to be shown at all. And that looks pretty good. Uh, by the way, I, I should point out with this modeling, if it looks like it's a little bit off, um, again, it's because I'm not a perfect uh, master at what a lightsaber should look like. But also, we're going to add lots of blurs and glows, so you really won't even be able to notice all these little modeling parts. So it's going to look awesome either way. Okay, so now that that's in line, uh, the fun part, we want to select our bone, hold down shift, and select our mesh. And we're going to press control P. I did it wrong again. Okay, select our bone, hold down shift, or select our mesh, hold down shift, select the bone, control P. And then with envelope weights, keep doing that backwards. So it's mesh first, then bone, control P. So now if you scrub through the timeline, you see our mesh dances along with that bone and it's perfectly in line with our video because of our two point motion tracking that we took the time to make sure it was perfect. And that is cool. Love motion tracking. It's so cool. Possibilities unlimited. Now to help us out, I'm going to select these empties and also this bone. Just press M and move them to a garbage later. Hey, why are these empties here? Get them out of here. Okay, so now if we scrub through, we have our mesh dancing in the wind. But if we look through the camera, it's perfectly in line. So, very cool. Now the fun part, well, every part of this is the fun part. We want to select our mesh. Um, I don't like that this is way over here. I'm going to, first of all, let's change this pivot point back to median point. And with this mesh selected, let's go object, transform, origin to geometry. That way that's just in the very center. And that's cool. Okay, so now with this selected, let's add a simple material. Call it light. And I want my, my lightsaber to be green. Uh, you can pick whatever color you want. So I'm just gonna turn down red and blue and turn green all the way up. And under settings, I'm gonna change the viewport color to the exact same color. That way we can sort of see what's going on. So, good. Back to frame one. Let's set up the layers for um, how we're going to do this motion tracking. So, or I'm sorry, the compositing. Because once you track your footage and have your animated mesh, we're going to go into the compositor, composite them all together so that it looks awesome. So, to do that, we need a foreground layer and a background layer. So, I'm going to go in here to the layers tab and double click this and name it foreground and just click this top layer right here and then we'll add another layer change this to background and make sure it's just the bottom layer right there um, we don't actually have a bottom layer so let's make one press 7 for top view and just press shift A and add in a plane and scale that up. And now if we hold down shift and select our top layer, you can see where the plane is in relation to the lightsaber. You want it to be some distance away, about like that, that's good. Um, what, what's next? Okay, so with our foreground layer selected, Let's 
check this drop down menu passes select shadow ambient occlusion emission and environment and then with the background you don't need to do any of those that's going to be good just how that is now we want to add a simple material to this plane so let's click new and that's all this plane is going to be transparent in our final render but it needs in order for blender to be able to read that it needs to have a material applied to it now just some simple settings under the render settings you want to make sure transparent is selected and that's because we need an alpha channel for this first layer um, and that's very important okay so now let's get into the actual material of this lightsaber with that selected we can drag our timeline up here and change this to the node editor very exciting it changes to rendered see it looks very boring um, I'm going to press shift A add in a mix shader and also a glossy shader Uh, I'll turn the roughness down and underneath the glossy let's just pick the same color that the diffuse has so that the gloss is the same color and 0.5 is fine for the mix of that I'm going to press shift A and add in a add shader shift A and emission 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 And you can you can select the same color, um, and then we'll change the strength. We're going to crank it way up to about twenty. You know, I don't I don't actually want that to be green. I changed my mind. Turn the green all the way down. Change it to white. Um, no, that's not right either. The light should be the emissions should be green. Maybe so glossy needs to be white. give it a hint of green I guess we'll change all this later once we get into compositing the whole scene together but for now I think that's good uh, we have our glowing lightsaber here so um, what's next I think we are ready to do a render and start seeing what this looks like with our video so I'm going to just leave the samplings at 10 that's fine and hit render. You can see we have two different layers render. We have our um, our actual mesh and then underneath that was our background layer which is just the light casted. So now at the top left we'll change it to compositing. Click on use nodes and background and I'll press shift A and add in a viewer that we can see what's going on and this is the fun part where you really start to see everything come together in an awesome way so we're gonna press shift A add in a movie clip and from this drop down menu just like first frame of our video and you can drag that to the viewer so that you actually see what's going on um, if you want this to not be so big actually sorry leave that at one press shift a and add in a scale node I don't know what I was thinking and change it from relative to render size and there you go we have something we can actually work with okay so um, now what do we do so now we want to mix together our mesh with our video. So to do that, very simple. Search for alpha over node. I have a very bad habit of searching for nodes. Um, it's just quicker for me. I don't know why. Um, anyway, what I did, I plugged the foreground layer of our mesh into the bottom. And I have the video plugged into the top. You can see we have our white lightsaber right there 
It'll look green later, I promise. Um, so now we want that nice uh, light effect to be applied. So let's press Shift A, add in a mix node, and change it to add. And then we'll just, with this render layer selected, we'll press Shift D, duplicate it, change it to background, drag that image over, put it into the bottom of this add node. You can see dun -dun, we have our very noisy firefly green light applied. And you can adjust the strength of this based on this factor value. This is what I was talking about. Um, I, I did research, <laughs> meaning I looked up Star Wars clips online. And the actual light of a lightsaber is just tinted, sort of whatever color it is. But it's really the glow around the outside that you're able to determine. Oh, yeah, that's a green lightsaber. Or, yeah, that's a blue. Um, and that's the effect we have here. This actual center is kind of a greenish tint, um, and then the glow is green. So that works out cool. Cooly? Cool? I don't know. Okay, so next thing we want to do, um, there needs to be some blur here. So I'm going to press Shift A and add in a glare node, and just drop that in between the foreground and the background. You can see that looks horrendous. We're going to change it from streaks to fog glow and you can set the size to maybe I don't know 10 forgetting what I did set the thresh threshold down maybe forgetting what I did with my final one um, anyway you can adjust this the glare node is a lot of fun highly recommend you use it a lot um, if you're doing effects or sci-fi things it's very cool um, to do fog glow threshold let's go one see what that looks like size maybe five okay that's what it is sorry turn the size down that gives sort of the the fine blur of the edges here we go eight that's cool and I'm pretty happy with that um, so now it's just all these noisy fireflies and now a lot of that will go away once you do your final render and you crank up your sampling it's a little bit um, but if you don't want to wait for the render time you can just add in a blur node and change it to fast Gaussian Crank this up, maybe 10 each. You can see, ooh, have that nice glow. Maybe change the size down. This is, I'll change that size up. This is just for the light around the lightsaber. Um, and we're gonna turn that down anyway, but, um, I'm gonna go back to Gaussian, just do bokeh. See what that looks like. Okay, that's looking cool. Maybe turn the size down. No, nope, don't want to do that. Let's go 1.5. Now underneath the factor, let's slide it down so it's not quite so bright. And if you want to work with just, I know it's getting kind of confusing. We have two things being glowed here. Um, you can unplug that top one, this top uh, light, and just work with this one. That way you get this how you like it. I'm going to change the threshold to 1, max to 0 0.5. Okay, so that turns it up. Let's turn the max. Ah, one's as high as you can go. Look at that. Change the threshold up. Ah. How about that? Okay, there we go. That's a setting that I like. <laughs> Sorry. It is a lot about just playing with it, playing with uh, how you want it to look, these different glares and glows and stuff. Um, there's a lot, a lot that can be done. 
and it's all very cool. So now let's add in this final, this, our light, which is basically what I'm doing with this background layer. We're faking, we're faking the fact that we don't have any light in our video coming from the lightsaber. So whereas with other compositing, you'd use this background layer for maybe a shadow, I'm using it as a light to cast light in our video. Um, now it, it's not true light. In other words, it's not casting a shadow from my face onto the wall or anything like that. That would take a lot more complicated compositing. Um, but it is getting just some general light coming from the lightsaber. And it's faking the idea that we have that it's actually casting light. So let's plug this back in to our add or our mix shader. And you can see now it's looking a lot better. We have some light coming off of our lightsaber. And you know, if you want to go crazy, you can just really make it so it's <laughs> really bright. Um, I just want kind of a subtle glow coming off of it. That looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I mean, you have your lightsaber have the nice glow. Um, I'll show you what I did for some my final color correction. Just press Shift A, add in a color balance wheel, and um, I turned the highlights, which is the far right one, down to sort of a reddish orange. And then the darks, I turned the darks down a little bit, add contrast, and change it to sort of a blue. And that gives sort of that sci-fi look right off the bat. You can see it looks very cool. We have our lightsaber glowing in this dark tunnel. And um, we have some nice contrast. And pretty happy with that. Uh, something you need to remember to do, if you just have everything plugged into the viewer, connect the output of that into the composite node. That way when you actually render, you um, get what you see right here. So let's review this. I know I went through that kind of quickly. Um, we have our bottom render layer, which is just our mesh right here. We have it on an alpha channel because we selected transparent in the render settings. So render just the mesh. We have it plugged into a glare node, which is plugged into the bottom of the alpha over node. On the top, we have our movie clip plugged in set to scale mixed with our background layer which is set to add so that this light is just added to the overall scene uh, we have that background layer blurred so that we have some nice blurry light with only 10 samplings of render which is very cool and then we have all of that from the alpha over node plugged into a color balance wheel, some simple color adjustment, plugged into our viewer and compositor. So that, that's it, that's the node setup. That's how I created my lightsaber, with just two points of motion tracking. And um, you wanna keep in mind, if this method doesn't really work if you're able to do a, a if you're wanting to do a lightsaber battle or something like that, you would need to actually have more points and you'd end up needing to do camera tracking. Um, this is just a two point motion track and really shows you how simple it is to add in some cool effects, some cool objects uh, to your scene. So now you're ready to just go ahead and hit render. If you want to render the full animation, same way you would render any other animation, start and end frame, set your output directory and click your animation. So that's it. That's how to create a lightsaber, how to do some two-point motion tracking. So hopefully, hopefully you were able to learn something from this and can use it to go create some cool effects. Thanks for watching.